It's part 12, cash flow statement, the indirect route. You may have heard it said before that cash is king. Why do we say this? Why is cash so important? This diagram was put out by the Bureau of Engraving and Printing, and it kind of goes through the new $100 bill that came out uh, a number of years ago in October of 2013. Now, when we think about money, oftentimes uh, when students think about money or we talk about money in accounting classes, we're referring to cash. And so when we look at cash for a business, there's a couple things that we need to consider. The first is where cash comes from. Okay, money flows into a business, or cash flows into a business, and this is what we call cash inflow. Now, companies can acquire cash by engaging in three types of activities. They can get cash through operations, through investing activities, and through financing activities. The second thing that's important is where the cash goes. What does the company do with the cash? Now, as the cash flows out of the organization, we call this cash outflow. And again, companies can spend cash when engaging in all types of activities. Operating activities require cash. Investing, uh, investing in different things requires cash. And financing is a source of cash, uh, a means of acquiring capital or cash for a business. Now, the difference between a company's inflow and outflow is what we refer to as their net cash flow. And as we start to look at how to build uh, the cash flow statement, this is going to be a really important concept. So what happens though if, if cash gets uh, turned off, right? If the inflow of cash starts to fall? Well, we're going to have problems, right? Without cash, a company is unable to pay its bills, to pay its employees, to purchase inventory or supplies, to expand operations, to pay for shipping, to pay for research and development, to buy patents, and the list could go on, right? Without cash, a company essentially would cease to function. If our pockets are empty, we're not going to be able to do very much. Cash is really the lifeblood of an organization. Without it, we're going to find it hard to achieve the purpose which we set out to achieve. So, the cash flow statement. Where cash comes from, where it goes, is really important. But the statements we now know only show us minimal information about cash. Here's our income statement, our retained earnings statement, and our balance sheet. What do these things show us about cash? Well, the income statement is not cash, right? We account for revenues when they're earned, not necessarily when money or cash comes in. We account for expenses when we incur them, not necessarily when cash gets paid for them. So the income statement doesn't really tell me specifically about cash. The retained earnings statement, again, is a measure of income, which is not cash. And the balance sheet only shows me what I had at the end of last period and what I had at the end of this period. It only really can tell me whether cash changed, how it changed, and by how much. So, I need a new statement. I need a statement that can show me where cash came from and where it went. So how do we build a cash flow statement? We're going to build it with three major sections. Number one is the operating section. Number two is the investing section. And number three is the financing section. Now, we organize it this way because these are the major activities businesses engage in. Operations, investing, and financing. 
The last part of the cash flow statement is simply a reconciliation to ensure that we have identified the right change in our cash from the last period to the current period. Now, when looking at these four parts, the operating section can be put together in one of two ways. You can use the direct method, or you can use the indirect method. And if you look at research, it pretty much indicates that the indirect method is used by about 98% of companies. And so our focus in this video is going to be on that indirect method. If you want to learn about the direct method, okay, there are many resources out there. But our time is going to be spent looking at the indirect method. So, two steps to preparing the operating section. Number one, we start with net income, which is revenues minus expenses. Why do we do this? The income statement sometimes is referred to as the statement of results of operations. Net income is not the same thing as net cash flow, however. So our income statement has a lot to do with operations. There are some things in it that don't have to do with operations, but it's a decent place to start. But again, net income is not the same thing as net cash flow. So, step number two, we have to make adjustments. We have to make adjustments to net income to arrive at net cash flows from operating activities. We're going to add back non-cash expenses to start with, things like depreciation and amortization. We're going to remove the impact of gains and losses, and we're going to look at changes in current operating assets and liabilities. So let's start. We're going to look at a situation for Carl's Canoes. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I've essentially made up this information to go along with our illustration that we've been using for the previous videos. Uh, and so we're going to see if we can't build a cash flow statement using this information. So to start with, here's our income statement for Carl's Canoes. They had $944,000 in sales and $78,000 in net income. Depreciation expense is in our income statement, and it is $80,000. But depreciation or amortization expense, either one, they're non-cash expenses. They don't have any effect upon a company's cash balance. If we are to adjust net income so that we arrive at the net cash flow figure instead, we must remove depreciation from the equation. To do this, we need to add the depreciation expense back to our net income figure. Essentially, if I deleted the depreciation expense item, shaded in pink there, from my income statement, what would happen to my income? Well, my income would go up. And so I add my depreciation back. Now, why do I do that again? Depreciation is a non-cash expense. When I record it, I record depreciation expense and accumulated depreciation. There's no cash involved. It is a non-cash expense. And so if I'm trying to get to my net cash flow number, I have to remove this from the equation. And so my cash flow statement would begin like this. I'm going to have a title like my other statements. And I'm going to start building the cash flows from operating activities section. We start that with net income, 78000 pulled from the income statement. And then we are going to make adjustments to reconcile net income to net cash flows from operating activities. The first adjustment we're going to make is for depreciation. And so we're going to add back the $80,000 of depreciation that was subtracted to get to net income. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to look at these other revenues and expenses, particularly these gains and losses. Purchases and sales of long-term assets, things like land, buildings, and equipment. And investments, when you purchase other companies' stocks or bonds or things like that. These are investing activities. Since we are attempting to determine net cash flows from operating activities, 
we need to remove the effect of these gains and losses from our net income. So, this situation is where we find the loss. It appears that the company sold equipment that they originally paid $40,000 for, and they sold it for $4,000. That equipment had accumulated depreciation of $24,000, so once we remove that, it leaves us a loss of $12,000. We looked at these types of transactions in the video on long-term assets. So if you need a review, you can go back to that video. Now, this loss on the disposal of PP&E shows up in my income statement, but it has nothing to do with operations. I also apparently sold some investments here, and so I removed the investments, which I paid 30000 for, or sorry, I paid 32000 for, but I sold them for sixty-two. So I have a gain on the sale of my investments for 30000 Now both of these, the loss and the gain, are included in my income statement. However, they are not operating activities. And so I need to remove them. Now, in order to remove them, what do I do? Well, the loss, right, originally reduced my income. So I need to add it back. The gain originally increased my net income so I need to take it out. So first I look for depreciation or amortization and add it back and second I remove gains and losses from my income. The third step is to look at changes in current operating assets and liabilities. This one's a little more confusing but hopefully we can walk through it to make some sense of it. Net sales. What do we know about net sales? Sales can be made for cash or on account. So of the $944,000 in sales, I don't know how much of that was for cash and how much of that was on account. In order to determine that, what account am I going to need to look at? Well, I'm going to have to look at my accounts receivable. Accounts receivable was 92000 back in 2027. And at the end of 2028, it was $106,000. So what happened? Accounts receivable increased by $14,000. What does this mean? Accounts receivable started with a balance of 92, ended with a balance of 106. What makes it go up? What makes it go down? In order for accounts receivable to go up, we have transactions that get recorded like this. When we record service revenue or sales revenue earned on account, right? We debit accounts receivable, we credit service revenue. That is what makes accounts receivable increase. What makes it go down? Well, accounts receivable decreases when we collect the cash on the receivables. So accounts receivable gets credited and cash gets debited. So which one did the company do more of this year? Did it have more in sales on account, which would increase accounts receivable, or did it have more in collections on the receivables, which would reduce the receivable balance? Well, it's obvious that there were more sales on account than collections, because what happened to the balance? The balance increased. And so the company the question is, did the company have more in sales on account or collect more in cash? And the answer is that $14,000 more was recorded in sales than was collected. And so if I think about that in regard to my income statement, of my net sales, 14000 of this was not collected in cash. What should I do with the 14000 that I did not collect in cash? Well, that 14000 should be removed from my income. So the increase in my accounts receivable would be subtracted from my income. Now, cost of goods sold. Similar thing, right? Cost of goods sold is the expense account for inventory. On my balance sheet, I look at my inventory and I see what happened. 
my inventory increased by $24,000 from the last year. What does that mean for my inventory? What makes it go up? What makes it go down? Inventory is going to go up when we purchase inventory. Now we can purchase inventory for cash or accounts payable on account, right? But the purchases, right? Purchases make it go up. What makes it go down? Sales. When we sell inventory, we record not only the sale, but also the reduction of inventory and the expense of that inventory through cost of goods sold. So what did the company have more of this year? Did it have more of purchases or did it have more in sales? Well, we see it must have had more in purchases. Why? Because the balance in inventory increased. So did the company purchase or sell more inventory? And the answer is that it purchased $24,000 more than it sold. Okay. When I look at my income statement and I see that they sold 464000 the company purchased 24000 more than that. And so how should I reflect that in my cash flow statement? I'm going to record an increase in my inventory as a subtraction from my income. Now, what does that do for us? Well, that helps us get closer to the cash amount that was spent on inventory. Insurance expense. Insurance expense relates to prepaid insurance, right? Prepaid insurance, according to our balance sheet here, it decreased by $2,000 from the previous year. So we need to look at what makes it go up and what makes it go down. Prepaid insurance is going to increase when we prepay for insurance, right? We would debit prepaid insurance and credit cash. What's going to make prepaid insurance decrease? Prepaid insurance will decrease when we expense the insurance we've prepaid for. So insurance expense and prepaid insurance. So the question then becomes, what did the company do more of this year? Did it record more in prepayments or more in expense? And it's fairly clear here that it must have recorded more in expense because the balance went from 4000 to 2000 So did the company expense more or prepay more? The answer is that the company expensed $2,000 more than it paid for. How do I know it's 2000 Well, that's the amount that the balance dropped. So what do we do with this? If the company expends 2000 more than it paid for, how does that affect our cash flow? What do I do with the $2,000 that was expensed but was not paid for? I need to take that and add that back to my income. If I only actually paid $28,000 in insurance cost, then the $30,000 that was subtracted needs to be adjusted, right? And so we would add back the $2,000 of the prepaid insurance. Now, cost of goods sold, again, if we think about it, and we think about the inventory purchases, we realize that inventory could have been purchased on account. And so even though we identified that we purchased more than we sold, we need to make sure that we identify how much we actually paid for. So, in order to do that, we have to look at the account, accounts payable. AP decreased by $8,000 from the previous year. And so if my accounts payable went from 34000 in 2027 to 26000 in 2028, I kind of wonder why. What makes it go up? What makes it go down? Accounts payable is going to go down when we pay off the amounts we owe other people. When does it go up? 
it's going to go up when we purchase things on account, like inventory. And so what did we do more of this year? Did we make more in payments to reduce our account's payable balance, or did we have more in purchases to increase the account's payable balance? Did the company purchase more or pay for more? The answer is that it paid for $8,000 more than it purchased. How do I know that? Because the balance went from 34 to 26, which is a decrease of 8. So, looking at this, how is it going to affect my cash flows? How does it affect my income? Before, we identified the fact that the company purchased $24,000 more than it sold. Now we've said the company paid for $8,000 more than it purchased. And so, in total, if cost of goods sold was $464,000, based on our income statement, the extra $24,000 we purchased and the extra eight that we paid for tells me that actually... $480,000 was the amount of cash we paid for inventory. And so, so far, we've subtracted the 464 to get to the net income figure of 78. We saw that on the income statement. The extra 24 was subtracted when I looked at inventory, and the extra 8 here is going to be subtracted when I put in the decrease in accounts payable. Okay. So a couple of things to note here before we step forward. There's some simplicity to this if you think of it in basic rules. The increase in accounts receivable and the increase in inventory were both increases in assets, and they are both subtracted. The decrease in prepaid insurance was a decrease in an asset, and it was added. And that will always be the case. If you have an increase in assets, you subtract them. If you have a decrease in an asset, you add it back. Now as we look at liabilities, the rules are the opposite. The decrease in accounts payable is going to be subtracted. Any increases in liabilities will be added back. So, if you can remember the basic rules, putting these together isn't so bad, even if the theory and the rationale behind them is a little confusing. So, moving forward. Wages expense. Wages expense is related to wages payable. Wages payable went from 4000 last year, at the end of last year, to 7000 at the end of this year. It increased by $3,000. So what makes wages payable go up and what makes it go down? Wages payable is going to increase when we record wage expense. Wages payable is going to decrease when we actually pay wages. So the question becomes, what did we have more of this year? Did we record more in expenses, or did we record more in payments? Since the balance went up, it's pretty clear that we must have recorded more in expense than we did in payments. The company expensed more or pay more in wages? The answer, expensed $3,000 more than it paid. On our income statement, the expense was uh, $284,000, but 3000 of that was not actually paid for. So what do I do with that extra $3,000 that was not paid for? The increase in wages payable is going to be added back. So here we have, again, the example of all the rules. Increases in assets, subtracted. Decreases in assets, added. Decreases in liabilities, subtracted. Increases in liabilities are added. The rules are opposite. So, we're getting close to finishing this operating section. We have a few more items. Interest expense. Interest expense and interest payable are related. Interest payable went up by $1,000. And so what makes interest payable go up? And what makes it go down? Interest payable is going to go up when we record interest expense. Interest payable is going to go down when we actually pay off the interest. 
So what did we do more of this year? Did we have more of cost incurred related to interest expense, or did we make more in payments on our interest, the interest that we owe? Since the balance went up, we must have expensed more than we paid for. So did the company expense more or pay more in interest? And the answer is that it paid, or sorry, expensed $1,000 more than it paid for. On our income statement, the expense was $10,000. And so the $1,000 that we did not pay for has to be added back. Income tax expense. Income tax expense and income tax payable are related. Income tax payable went down $6,000. And so again, we have to look at what makes it go up, what makes it go down. Income tax payable is going to go up when we record income tax expense. Income tax payable is going to go down when we pay off the taxes we owe. So what did we do more of this year? Did we make more in payments or record more in expense? Obviously, we made more in payments because the balance went down by six thousand dollars so did the company pay more in taxes or expense more it paid six thousand dollars more than it expensed if it paid six thousand dollars more than it expensed what should we do with the extra amount that we paid the extra amount that we paid should be subtracted from our income now that we've gone through all the current operating assets and liabilities and appropriately either added or subtracted the changes in those accounts we have completed the operating section of the cash flow statement and so our total starting with 78 net income adding and subtracting all the adjustments is net cash flow from operating activities of ninety four thousand dollars there's a typo. I see typo right there. That's all right. So $94,000. What does that mean? That means that over the course of the year 2028, our cash went up by $94,000 due to our operational activities. Cash came in, cash went out, and the difference, the net cash flow, was $94,000. So looking at this operating section, the first thing we do again is start with net income, and then we make adjustments. The first adjustment we make is for depreciation or amortization. Then the second thing we do is take out the effect of any gains or losses. And the last thing we do is to look at changes in current operating assets and liabilities. Those four steps, basically, are what we take to put together the operating section. We're going to look at the other sections in an, another video. So in summary, cash flow is important for businesses as it determines whether a company can pay its bills or invest in expansion. Cash flow statement provides financial statement users with details related to the company's cash inflows and outflows for the period. And the cash flow statement is made in three sections, the operating, investing, and financing cash flow sections. So, as always, remember, 